I do have a prayer. <laughs> oh, thanks. Uh, prayer today is about strength. Dear Lord, I pray that you give us strength to be strong for you in the world today. Lord, you know the struggles that we that we will face today. Please, please be with us as we go through them. Carry me if I am too weak to move. If I stumble in them, forgive me, Father. When I succeed in them, I will praise you. You are worthy of all praise and honor. Amen. Amen. Thank Amen. you. Okay, uh, the Commissioner's Office is requesting the Board approve and execute the minutes for the meeting of October 15, 2020. So moved. Second. Question to Laura? Yes. Question to Larry. Right. Question to Aye. And the Commissioner's Office is requesting the Board approve and execute the minutes for the meeting of October 20th, 2020. So moved. Second. Question to Laura? Yes. Question to Aye. Question to Aye. Aye. And Commissioner's Office is requesting the Board approve and execute the minutes for the meeting of October 27, 2020. So moved. Second. Yes. Right. Yes. And Commissioner's Office requesting the Board approve and execute the minutes for the special meeting of October 28, 2020. Yes. Right. Yes. All right. And financials. How you doing? Good morning, Commissioners. How are you? Good morning. Good. How are you all? Great. Awesome. Okay. So today's uh, financials include an appropriations transfer. From the Commissioner's Office, General Fund Miscellaneous Contingency and Operating Transfers Out Accounts to the Clerk of Court's General Salary Account to true up uh, to the year end. And this was reimbursed to the General Fund last week as we, we discussed. And a supplemental transfer in the Commissioner's Miscellaneous Accounts for year end capital transfers. There are cash transfers from the General Fund to Court Technology to pay a portion of their 2020 funding. Uh, from the Help America Vote Fund to the General Fund as a partial repayment of additional appropriations provided to the Board of Elections for the 2020 election, and from the Coronavirus Relief Fund to various departments to reimburse them for unbudgeted expenses incurred as a result of the pandemic in accordance with your resolution of acceptance 20-165. Among the encumbrances are a then and now from the Common Pleas Court to John Bosco for appointed counsel fees not previously encumbered. And among the vouchers are 180000 from the engineer's office to the village of Millfield for the Tear Creek Parkway resurfacing project, and $437,036.20 from the engineer's office to Ronyak Paving Incorporated for the asphalt resurfacing of Burton Windsor Road. Thank you. Um, what was the, the Board of Elections again? This was uh, a grant money that they had received from the state in their Help America Vote Fund. Oh, okay. And uh, it was money that they had earmarked to them uh, for extra things that they needed to do as a result of coronavirus for the general election. Mm -hmm. They requested additional appropriations from the general fund in their general fund accounts, and then they reimbursed the general fund with that money from the okay. America vote. So we fronted, the, or the general fund fund fronted the money for it. Correct. To yes. the grant. Arrived. Yes. Okay. And we were just, what we did is we facilitated them getting the money from the Help America Vote Fund into their their expense accounts. Okay. And how much was that roughly again? Um, th they reimbursed us one hundred eighteen thousand. Mm -hmm. um, it's about thirty thousand short of what we actually gave them as, as far as appropriations were concerned. Okay. So. And, and what what type of things would that be like? Um, well, Pete is Pete is in here. Oh. It was additional materials and supplies, contract services, okay. salary amounts okay. because of the extra counting of absentee ballots okay. and stuff like that. So. Okay. Did the tent rental come in this? Did you? We ba we purchased that, those tents. So we didn't have to purchase rent to rent it. What's that? <coughs> rent it. The, the, county, the county actually purchased those with the COVID relief. Okay. Okay. Correct. So we have those for future. Yeah, for whatever else. Probably the department. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Yep. That's probably a good idea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very good. Um, Pete, since you're here, um, last week I think I asked um, the equipment purchases. That's been put off for the last, uh, I don't know, year and a half or two years, correct? A lot of progress has happened since then. Okay. Uh, this past Thursday, a vendor was selected, es and &S, and we are awaiting a contract from them. Uh, once we get the contract, we're going to submit it to the prosecutor's office mm -hmm. and the secretary of state's office for approval. And once we have approval on it, uh, we're going to uh, 
submit to the commissioners mm -hmm. for a resolution. We yeah. have draft language on the resolution. So the, um, you know, I, I can't remember, I, I think I went on a, a demonstration, I don't know, that might have been like, like two years ago or something. Is it the same equipment? or, or It is should it, be. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we had. The you haven't changed the what you guys wanted originally, right? Uh, no. The uh, what ESNS would have shown then, I was on another board then, but mm -hmm. that's basically what we will be buying from ESNS. Okay. Okay. So you don't think, with everything going on right now, that that, that there's going to be some some changes coming down the pike of some of these state boards, like? really looking into this because I mean, um, let's face it I, I don't care what side of the table you're on some of the stuff is suspicious the ex well in Ohio the state examiners board already takes a very close look at all of this I'm the board's been in place for years and has really seen its mandate increase over the last uh, two or three years uh, a lot of effort goes into approving election equipment. There's a lot of election equipment that's available in other parts of the country that is not approved in Ohio. That's, uh, is there is there any uh, benefit to keeping it simple? Um, you know, my dad still uses paper and pencil, believe it or not. He doesn't have an iPad or uh, mm -hmm. any emails or anything. And, you know, he doesn't seem to have any problems. In, you know, mm -hmm. if, well, is there any upside to keeping that? same thinking uh, here? Well, there are people who like to talk about the idea of a hand count. Mm -hmm. The error rate on a hand count is almost invariably higher than a machine count. But I mean, the, the counting, yeah, I could see that. But the, what about as far as um, um, susceptibility, you know, being able to... Uh, None of our machines yeah. that... Uh, are involved in the in ballot counting are ever connected to the internet. Okay. Yeah, okay. And you'd and have to break in and manually okay. mess with the machine. Okay. Too. So ours are different than what you're hearing in the national press. As well, as first of all, in some of those in the national press, they're there's a general misunderstanding about how they interact with the greater system. Mm -hmm. uh, I I will say that we don't, our machines never interact with the internet. We have to manually program cards to basically allow votes to be mm -hmm. processed, and even that machine is not connected <coughs> to the internet. It's a mm -hmm. standalone machine. Yeah. Well, with these new voting machines, there's still going to be a, a paper receipt of some kind, right? Oh, it, it'll be the same kind of, uh, you'll get a ballot, and okay. that's the good thing about paper ballots. Yeah. They're self-verifying. Right. right. We okay. just went through our post-election audit. And yeah. I mean, even if it takes us a little more time and effort and maybe resources, but to, you know, to get it right, I would rather go that route than, you know, racing down this road to... Uh, expediency and less cost and then who knows what's on the other end you know and not trusting it maybe you know. well i unfortunately <clears throat> we've entered an environment where it's there's so much distrust out there i'm pretty sure we could do everything perfectly mm -hmm. and i'd still get the phone calls i get mm -hmm. on a weekly basis yeah no we're i mean the equipment that we're getting is essentially the next generation of the equipment we, that we have. Use. Yeah, great. So. Okay. And we really need it? Oh, yes, we do. <coughs> Our current, to get through this election, we had to rent uh, 20 uh, M100s to, because the rate of breakdown we have on the ones we have is such that... What's a M100? Is that the that counter? That is the scanner. scanner you see at the polling oh, okay. location. Okay. The dark gray... Yeah. Right. Boxes. And they are... An, they're about an end of life. Okay. Uh, so we how have old, the How old are those roughly, Pete? Uh, about a decade. Okay. 
But it, so, like, I have a little bit of a hard time really comprehending that. <clears throat> a decade is ten years. Yes. And and if you have a primary and you have a general election, if you had one every year, that would be two. We use those things twenty times, and there's a problem with them. Well, we first of all we have to we do more than just put them out there on election day. There's a lot of effort put into testing and verification. Uh, so it's not just we use them 20 times. Uh, and then, frankly, when you have the public interfacing with the equipment, they're not the ones who know how to use it in a, well, in a manner that won't cause problems. Mm -hmm. So you'll but you see know what people. I'm saying, whether you're testing it or not. So you test it two. Let's say you test it two times a year. You test it once before the primary, once before the general. That's forty times, and we're having problems. That would be like if you took forty phone calls on your phone and you got to get a new phone. Yeah, and that would be the case, except if when the phone rang. I mean, I'm I not trying to give you a hard time. I'm just saying and, I struggle with that. Yeah, I'm. That, it's a deeper issue because these the equipment is not. I, it's not fragile, but it's also not right. the kind of thing that you can just <clears throat> throw right. down. And so, it, if I remember correctly, the state is kind of pushing you towards updating this equipment. Is that correct? Right, and yeah. a lot of the funding yeah. comes through the yeah. state. If, is there other um, counties out there that have um, maybe some of the smaller counties that have just stuck with their same old equipment for years? Not to my knowledge. No. I'm, okay. The, in fact, the smaller counties have, if anything, been quicker on it. Okay. Okay. I see. Okay. Well, thank you for that. Certainly. We were we were asking about it last week, so I appreciate you being here. Um, so we do have. Um, any other questions related to financials? Okay. okay. Uh, can we have a motion to approve financials, so please? Second. Yes. 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 Okay. And uh, CARES Act expenditures. Yes. So today's resolution of acceptance is in the amount of eighty-one thousand ninety-four dollars and ninety cents. For reimbursement, we have $544.90 from the Sheriff's Office for PPE and shipping for isolation curtains previously approved in Resolution of Acceptance 20-141. Mm -hmm. And for the proposed, we have $80,550 from the Auditor for the purchase of a resident comment card ticketing system and appraisal administration management portal in order to assist the public without the need for in-person visits to the county offices. Hmm. What um, what do you know about that? I, I do have the the two um, letters of necessity mm -hmm. that I can read to you. Um, the first one would be for the resident comment card ticketing system. It says, uh, providing Joggy County residents with the ability to submit real estate property valuation appeals without having to personally visit the county real estate appraisal office has become a focus issue to further protect the public's health and safety as well as that of the county employees. The purchase of this system, uh, which is similar to that used in Lake and Ashtabula counties, would afford residents the ability to remotely submit their requests for real estate property valuation appeals from home. Okay. And then uh, the other one, which is the um, appraisal administration management portal, mm -hmm. providing employees and board members access to essential data and records regarding real estate appraisal information has become more challenging with COVID-19. Face-to-face meetings are being replaced with telemeetings, which require records to be digitally maintained and made available for employees and board members access from anywhere. Hmm. The requirement of this system uh, is to permit the accurate accounting of appraisal data changes, submissions, and other necessary related documents in the comment repository made available through a web portal for employees working remotely and board members uh, attending meetings via WebEx and other telemeeting products. Hmm. So it'll be like a countywide system that we can access our meetings. Through yeah, this and this is the over. Yeah, this is this is well. This is so that there's appraisal data available online, oh. the most up to date 
uh, system for those board members and, and the public and stuff. So this is part of an overall thing that the auditor has been doing to kind of update his website, make it not as much of an information place only, but an actual place where the residents can, can actually do things. Okay. Correct. Good. Okay. Very good. Okay. Uh, any questions, comments? Then? Good. All right. Uh, motion to approve the CARES Act expenditures. So moved. Second. Yes. Right. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jerry. Good morning, everybody. How are we doing? Good. Good. Morning. How are you? Morning. Morning. Good. 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 Got one last uh, County Highway 38 easement for you, uh, Bundy's Bird Road, uh, with you and Rebecca Miller for the amount of $200. Oh, okay. Make that motion. Second. Question Yes. Yes. Thank you very much. Thanks. Have a great rest of your day. Yep. Okay. Um, Department of Aging. Good morning. Good How's everybody? Good. How about everybody here? Good. Good. Just shut the right orange thing outside. Mm -hmm. Feels good <laughs> on my back. <laughs> I know. <laughs> All right. Um, first, first one we have is the promotion of Leah Byler. Um, she is our full-time information and referral assistant. I uh, was promoting her to a recreation and education assistant at about the adult day center. Okay. Uh, motion, please. To move. Second. Motion to move. Yes. Right. Yes. yes. The second one is to actually revise the job description for information and referral assistant. Um, Jessica and I had looked it over and um, what it encumbered didn't quite cut it. Mm -hmm. And we're finding out more and more with the COVID what they really have to do. So we wanted to revise it and so that's what the second one is. Okay. So moved. Second. Pressure to Yes. Right. Yes. Thank you very much. Okay. And then last one, I'm the only person today. Um, we would like to permission to advertise to replace my full-time referral information and referral assistant. Okay. okay. So we'll second. Yes. Yes. Right. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Appreciate you coming in. Thank you. Hey, Dave. Good morning. A little bit of sad news to share. You may already know Larry Biden's mom passed last night or yesterday. Oh no. So Larry and his family in their prayers. Oh boy. Okay. He was in the uh, facility for I don't know, maybe about a year now. I don't recall exactly. Huh. So I spoke to him, he was able to be with her right before she passed. Oh good. Yeah. So that'll be a blessing for him. Yes, sir. Hmm. Um, anyway, I'm, I'm here today to request the board's approval for hiring and appointing uh, Martin Castelletti to the position of director to be effective January 4th. Um, obviously, this would be contingent upon a successful completion of the normal pre employment uh, conditions. <coughs> Very good. Well, it's a long time coming, right? Yeah, it's a long time coming, and um, uh, it'll be a little bit of a learning curve. He's been in the, the HUD and grant allocation business for mm. about 15 years, so he's got some pretty good Back experience. So I think, the, yeah. you know, um, maybe a county learning curve, but I think he'll be up to speed rather quickly with this. Good. And you all taking the time to yeah. 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 interview him? Dave, Dave and Kathy interview him, I interview him separately. Good. Second, second interview. Yeah, Very cute of me to try to talk him out of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Is he a local guy then, yeah. or yeah, yeah. 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 But yeah good. So he's, he's got 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 good experience to, to be able to kind of hit like they hit the ground running. Hit the ground running on the yeah. on the grants on the grant side, but he's got he's gonna have to learn how we work in the yeah. county. Yeah, but he he's, knows Jaga County and some of the yeah, he does where to start. He's yeah, quite familiar. He's okay, got friends and relatives, and uh, he good. spends a lot of time here. So good. Yeah, okay. that's a good thing. He's Excellent. got a lot of vowels in his last name. So yeah. Like that. yeah. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> yeah. I'll make that motion. Second. Yeah. Yes. All right. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Um, I was just talking to Jerry. I got a letter um, the other day from the uh, manufacturer here in uh, Jug County. He wants us to take a tour of his plant. Yes. Did I you saw see that? that? We'll try to set that up. Okay. Yeah. 
Is that foam or? Yeah. Marble. Um, marble. 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 Yeah. 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 The so, parents, by the way, were part of the original founders, I think, of the yeah. CIC. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, this, yeah, really? Right. Yeah. That's yeah. the yeah. family. Yeah. 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 <coughs> Where does Monroe or Trail Monroe. Monroe. Yeah. Yeah. Mon But that's that's good, you know. Anytime somebody reaches out to us and invites us to, you yeah. know, I think, that, yeah, yeah. And that's uh, that's the only thing about bringing Martin on. Once he gets started, that'll free up some more days. Kind of that's right. Dealing with Exploring those, those you know, so we understand what they do and you know what maybe their challenges are and you know. It's fascinating. Yeah. A lot of these companies. I was on a call yeah. the other day with Universal Plastics out in the and uh, and their CEO. It's fascinating what they do and mm -hmm. looking to expand. Yeah. And uh, it's all good. Yeah. All I mean, good. there's a lot of unique businesses in Jarrah County that you just drive by every day. You, know, you have no idea what's going on inside, you know, yeah. but they're doing some fantastic, you know, cutting edge stuff. You know, it's like. Some of it they're selling worldwide. Yeah, right. Not just nationally, but worldwide. Yeah. So it's fascinating. Yeah. Certainly one of, our, one of our thought processes on economic development is keeping what we have. Mm -hmm. Obviously, bringing more in, but keeping what That's we a have. Priority. So that we yeah. able to have these meetings ahead of time, because I think you said a number of times, Tim, uh, that, you know, that when a business is looking for something and they don't come to, they, they don't think, oh, I'll call the commissioners and right, see, right. <laughs> see what's available. That's right. So we Whatever. want to be on the, on the front end of that. Having yeah, yeah. Yep. Whatever happened with the factory there next door? With uh, these guys? They still are the door and yeah. uh, Well, they're up and operating, you know, in Menor. They are. Yeah, right down there at where Route 44 ends in the two. They got a brand new facility there. It's I'm guessing it's probably about 80,000 square feet. Wow. It's huge. So and this, this is really winding down okay. over here. I've seen it open is. dumpsters there, and uh, I think they're you know pretty much taken it apart. Mm. Still well, a few trucks in and out of there, but yeah, they're they're a year past the, when they said they were going to close originally. Over there. Right. Mm -hmm. Maybe a year and a half now. So. I, have they started marketing that property yet or not? No, I haven't seen any of that going up. Yeah. Yeah. None mm -hmm. of that. Yeah, it might be worth it, you know, with um, the potential availability of this property someday and that, you know, there's, you know, I'm, I'm just surprised we haven't heard anything from Shard and their economic development or, you know, yeah. if there's any synergy between this property and that property, but I, I guess that's a different stance that they're being taken. Requesting information. Yeah. And there's, there's 18 or 20 acres in the back. Too. Yeah, right. I mean, there's always been talk about Places. developing yeah. all this back here, right? And well, there's a plan for half of There's 40 acres back there that Lacey owns, and he's looking at uh, leasing 20 acres for the Redwood development. Remember Auburn turned them down? Right, right. Well, they came here in the Chardon house, so they're looking to put up, I think it's nine units, individual units. Okay, there. okay. Uh, you know, good, good rent, like fifteen yeah. to $1,800 yeah. a month. Yeah, yeah, I mean, there's perfect, and I wasn't there to talk to about uh, some type of um, throughway so that all the traffic isn't coming down. What, that, they, that was one of my thoughts. Was this property would be good for them? If, you know, if there, if there was something they were looking at to be able to have an access directly out to forty four. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. that might be when we when we start looking at this, that, you know, talking with them about yeah. do they want to look at purchasing? Sure, sure. Yeah, you put those nine acres, our twelve or thirteen acres together, and then another twenty. That's a nice path for somebody. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, but if, you know, everybody's. I guess maybe. Oh, we're not to that point yet of thinking like that, but you know, that's the that's the whole point of economic development. Yeah. I think is to get in front of those type of it's really long term. Really, not too early yeah. when you think about it, well, yeah. because right. it's a long lead time for companies to make a move sure. like that. And yep. So if they can start, you know, visualizing it, we should probably talk about that. You know, trying yeah. to start to move. That's one of my goals for 2021. Now we got the building started and up and running. Is to start looking at marketing some you know, of these other working with. Working with you know, companies to see who could market this for us. Good, good, good. So we, yeah. The sooner yeah. we can sell it, you know, get this property off our hands after we're mm -hmm. the new building the better. for the county. Of. Absolutely. Good. Okay. Well, great. Thank you very much, Dave. Yeah. Appreciate Thank your you. time. Yeah. Good morning. Good morning. Another day.
<laughs> How is everyone? Good. 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 How you been? Oh, hanging in there. We're busy. Yeah. <laughs> you know, just is it trying you guys, to help folks through a, through a pandemic. So. Yeah. Are you guys? Um, are you being able to accomplish everything still? Do you think with yeah, your, everybody? Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Um, yeah. I mean, thankfully the the state has. <clears throat> provided us instead of having desktops and screens mm -hmm. we have Microsoft surfaces for our entire staff that really we can plug and play wherever we are I mean so we got folks working in the field so we have folks that are working from home folks that are working from the office doing both we now say if you take your surface home with you no matter what, if there's actually the day that we had this also the huge snowstorm, mm -hmm. we worked at about 75, 80 percent capacity even after the county offices were closed. Okay, yeah. So we That's had it. folks working even after everything right. was shut down. Yeah. So, so you think your efficiency, you haven't had a drop off? Or, absolutely. Yeah. No, we're yeah. actually higher. We and yeah. for for snap, we've hit a hundred percent for like five months straight as far as just getting applications, accuracy, everything. Good. So good. No, we're we're, we're learning really, some new lessons out of this. That's for yeah. sure. You know? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I I mean, like any person you'd be skeptical yeah. like at first be like oh people are home they're yeah. like playing video games and in their pajamas <laughs> and, you yeah. know watching yeah. Yeah. Maury Povich and <laughs> doing whatever you know Judge Judy <laughs> yeah right but no people because what they do is they're appreciating the fact that they don't have a commute because mm -hmm. we get still have folks that would normally drive 45 minutes in 45 minutes home and so they actually get to sleep more and or do whatever they need to do in the morning or at the mm -hmm. end of the day they can cover their grocery shop instead of just their commute home. So they're, they're mm -hmm. respecting the clock and mm -hmm. and we're able to monitor every single employee and, and you know what yeah. they're doing. And we do supervision generally anyway between our supervisors and the employee. Mm -hmm. They do regular check-in and, and we're able to keep up what's yeah. on the up and up. So Yeah, I mean, even though there's a lot of um, negativity that surrounded us, I think there are some little uh, rays of light that we've learned um, how to become more efficient and you know even just talking about the design and development of our new building you know office spaces you know office spaces may change the way we perceive mm -hmm. an office space it might not be like you just got your four walls and a you know it might be more of a you know communal thing where you come in check in on a and, and then you're back out again on the road well, that's you know. what people that's yeah. called hoteling yeah yeah, and exa that's exactly right. Uh, it, people may be interchangeable in mm -hmm. office space, especially mm -hmm. like I said. I just we have these surfaces that yeah. you can literally plug and play. As long as you have a, a, a internet connection or whatever, you can do what you need to do. So if you have a data drop in the office, mm -hmm. you can work it for however you know you need to be. I mean, so yeah. I mean, there's certain things that we're learning how to do differently. Help me learn day was different, and now we're coming up on sponsor a family. Um, and so instead of doing a one day delivery day to all the families out there for Christmas, we're doing a really like a four day pickup um, where they can drive by the agency and we're actually going to be open on the weekend coming up um, in, in where they can come in and just whatever's convenient for them and we'll have their they drive up we have like a whole thing we'll do a whole thing <clears throat> through a parking lot and they'll drive through give us a name we'll deliver the package good. you know christmas yeah. presents for the family and food and stuff and, and so we'll you know we'll just figure bottom line you just got to do what you got to do figure and you just got to figure it out yeah yeah you know, that's right. so we're not so going to stop so yeah. adopting a family that's whoever like rotary clubs or mm -hmm. Kiwanis or whatever they pick the family and they adopt them for Christmas time. Mm -hmm. And then they bring all the gifts to your office. Bring the gifts. I mean, we purchase, we have some food and stuff too. We sit and we have some extra gifts. And so we make sure that we, you know, they, they, they can, whoever wants to sponsor our family can do what they want to do. And we try to make ends meet so everyone gets the same amount of stuff. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, um, so we have some extra stuff to help, extra toys, extra food, or if we need to. Um, so, you know, but yeah, every, every family pretty much gets about $500 worth of worth of stuff, depending on the size of the family, it goes up and down. But, you know, food, you know, for Christmas, mm -hmm. um, toys for, for kids, things that the parents need things. So yeah, we sponsor the whole family. That's great, yeah. And you, and you work in, uh, with what, Catholic Charities, do they help you with that? 
Uh, no, it's, no, this is Sarah Schenegers. Okay. I thought they, maybe there was some other... Um, I mean, people will we'll work with them and network with all... Yeah. Actually, not just Catholic churches and yeah. the whole community and they say, hey, you know, reach out and if you want to sponsor a family, they'll come and help out. Okay. okay. You know, but it's really community-based. Okay. And the numbers are up for people adopting a family, correct? Um, this Well, we're not done yet. So, okay. So I can, I, we can provide you the numbers. Usually, Sarah comes and provides you an update she does, yeah. you know so yeah. we'll all have her do that mm -hmm. um, so we're not we're not done yet you know we're it, we've gotten some you know late additions people more and more that are actually reaching out that want to help out um, that don't are trying to find ways to do that so I'm suspecting we could be more Jim yeah it just depends on the end I mean, we get all the numbers from her good, yeah good, good. okay so sorry um, no no thank you <coughs> yeah sorry catch answering up. questions yeah um, so we're here for number 12. Um, you guys have heard from me, and I know that Jerry has heard from me more times than he wants to, about <laughs> mileage. Um, the And I actually learned a new lesson as it surrounds this, because Alyssa, our phys main fiscal person, has been out herself because she, she doesn't have COVID, but she was exposed to someone who had COVID, so she's got to do the whole quarantine thing. Mm -hmm. And so yesterday, I was actually doing vouchers for the agency myself, which is not fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, but anyway, I, and I had to do mileage myself, and and going in accordance to what our current policy is, and then what the auditor's office is having us do. And I'll tell you what, I'm on Google Maps, you know, subtracting mileage and doing things because the auditor's office has been telling me that my current policy is not in conjunction with the IRS guidelines. So what I did, we had a meeting in the summer, and then I met with Laura. I rewrote our entire policy um, with, in accordance with IRS guidelines. I've gone over it with Laura LaChapelle. I've gone over it with Jerry, probably until he wants to smack me in the face. <laughs> <laughs> with how many times he's got to hear about this. Um, but the fact is, as you guys know, Especially now with COVID, my staff is driving everywhere in their own personal cars. They're working from home. They're going everywhere. So I, we rewrote the policy in in a guidance in a, um, in accordance with the IRS guidelines. Laura LaChapelle has approved it, and the current policy that we're now proposing to change, in accordance with Section 7.4, is been approved by the prosecutor's office to be in accordance with the IRS guidelines. Um, and you guys have it yourself, and mm -hmm. so I'm here to ask you now for approval to change that to be in that accordance, so we do not have to go through these gyrations yeah. anymore. Yeah. So, and so I'm hoping that also at some future point, you guys, for the entire county, can um, adopt a similar policy because again, it's already been approved now by mm -hmm. Laura. And so I'm hoping you guys can approve it as well. So is this called? Would this be considered temporary? Um, place of business right now? Is, it, is that what they're falling under? We, people that are working from home are, are, are working from home under a pandemic, mm -hmm. but their regular place of work is still GCJFS, so it's mm -hmm. our building mm -hmm. um, or the future building yeah, yeah. will be their regular job or place of work. Um, but they're now, under, understandably, on, in a pandemic, mm -hmm. working from home um, but they still have a regular job or regular place of work. Mm -hmm. So right now, um, the the employees that are working from home are driving to clients' places, to clients, you know, you know, yeah. place, and they're having to subtract enormous amounts of mileage from there because of the home. Exa exactly, yeah. and so and it's really not fair to them. So no, it's not. It, so it was a misunderstanding the the way I look at it, the way that. that in talking with Laura, it was a misunderstanding from the auditor's office on how the IRS code really works. Thank you. Yeah. They they were utilizing the, um, the local, I don't know what's the term in the area, the, the local metropolitan area. The local area, metropolitan area, yeah, which doesn't which even was apply. Not a, which was not correct because everybody still, this, and this started before the pandemic even, everybody still in, in the county has a permanent place of work. Some people have two permanent places of work. So if you were to go, because you have a permanent place of work, if you were to go somewhere else first, mm -hmm. that travel travel expense from your home to that other location is reimbursable mm -hmm. by the county. Mm -hmm. The auditor's office was reading that under the fact that, that 
like they didn't have a permanent place of work. So that would have been under the IRS code. That would not be reimbursable. Yeah, yeah. So it was it was a misunderstanding, and what what we finally came kind of came to was rewrite the policy, get the auditor's office to be to be okay with it, or get the yeah. prosecutor's office to be okay with it, and the auditor's office will accept it. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I know that this so, was I mean this was pre-pandemic. I've heard like beginnings of this. Yeah. Well, know. I just I, I yeah. wanted to take the lead on it because. I, a, I mean, I, I, I have a ton of, now, especially with COVID, I mean, I, I have folks that are elderly folks that are child support workers that still have to go into court, and so they're driving from home, mm -hmm. and they're putting an extra expense on their car in the winter, you know, whatever, yeah. and they should get, re I mean, I'm, getting, you know, I, I, they should get reimbursed. If they're on it. county time, they should get reimbursed. You know, yeah. and so it's just, I, and, and then literally, uh, yesterday, I'm subtracting, you know, 60 miles from some of these because that yeah. of what they're asking because they just say I you know they, they they've said to us I am not going to pay that out this and is the auditor's yes, office they yeah. said that we're not going to pay it out because you know I'm going to be personally liable for that okay, okay. so fine I'll that. fix it yeah yeah and so we took the time and I appreciate Jerry's time and Laura's time and yeah and I, I went through several companies I said you know to see how they're doing it Put together the policy, and then hopefully it's the gold standard I mean, for the county. Yeah, I would we're imagine we're not working on a county policy similar to that, but we want to, we have a little bit more to deal with than JFS. Yeah, so a little we're different. Trying to make sure yeah. we have add I, everything in. <clears throat> but I imagine we're not the only county in the state of Ohio that reimburses for travel expenses, correct? correct. So, no, I mean, but what are some other <laughs> policies? <laughs> there, there are some issues with the with the policy. I mean, they they won't go with what other counties yeah. are doing because I brought up Hamilton County, Cuyahoga County. Who who's they? Me, yeah, the auditors. The auditors often. I I because I said to them, and I'm sorry. Our auditors. I'm auditors. sorry. I'm just yeah. frustrated right. because I've yeah. dealt so much with this, and you've heard guys. You guys have heard me talk about it. Is 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 a lot of. What, what the auditor's office says is, I don't care what other counties do. I'm doing what what I think mm. is what they think what is the right. Mm -hmm. The way he interprets it and what his accountant, or he's got a guy that I know he's referred to or talked to an accountant or whatever. And what does the state advise? I mean, the, the state auditor's office, I would imagine they have a policy, right? That when they were auditing us. Yeah, they, the state... When they when they audit us, they're, they're they're not necessarily auditing us that we're meeting the IRS code and things. That we're make, they're making sure that we're we're properly processing payments and, and no, according to their own. Policy. They don't go in depth into all our. But policies. they don't give you any advice. No, they will. The no, state no. will never yeah. tell us it's, what to do. They'll set. They'll, they'll refer you to your prosecutors. Can office. you get an AG opinion on it? If you, if, you if, if you needed to, yeah. yeah. It was it wasn't something that we, we were able to to, yeah. to solve it without that yeah. going that far. Yes, yeah. you know the AG. You can get AG opinions on pretty much anything you want, but mm -hmm. you know eventually the AG starts looking at you and saying, "Don't you have a prosecutor to do all this?" Work? Exactly. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so know, Laura, who in the, in the prosecutor's office, who represents both the auditor's office and us and you guys, I sent that up and it's been approved by her. So to me, and, and according to the auditor, it was, it was if, if the prosecutor's office blesses it and approves it, I will pay it. Mm -hmm. That was the last. So I, I went through all these gyrations to get to where we are today, mm -hmm. to get it approved. And again, I get hopefully it can set up Jerry to, to get a, a policy approved for the county as well. But again, because it's been so imminent for my staff. Mm -hmm. um, no, you're not the only one. I've heard, you know, we've got other... I've just pressed it. Other, yeah, other elected official. Yeah. So I hope this can be the starting point for the rest of the county. Yeah. Okay. Well, I appreciate you have you know taking that on, and, and hopefully we can uh, clarify this moving forward. Yeah, you just got to do what's right. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So I, I hopefully you guys have a chance to look at it and understand it, and yeah. we're here to get it approved. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, <coughs> This will be the approve the recommendation of the executive. Or no, I'm sorry. Where am I? Here? No, you're right. No, okay, you got it. Paul. Okay. Um, so, the Department of Job and Family Services requesting the board approve the recommendation of the executive director and amend section 7.4 travel expenses, updating the travel for routine routine work assignment to be effective December 8, 2020. I so move. Second. Yeah. Right. Yes. 
Thank you, All right, good gentlemen deal. and lady. I Thank appreciate you. it. Appreciate it. And uh, if you have any more questions, feel free to, no. to, to reach out. Let us out. know if you have any more problems with that. Well, they're yeah. going to, as I told Mary, I think they're going to be surprised that the way it's really, I think, with their misinterpretation. And by the way, I did forward it to Kate as well to, mm -hmm. to let her know. You know, so is Kate, uh, you mean Kate Jacobs? Yeah. 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 Now, she, is she the, the um, what is she, the legal counsel? Or yeah, pretty much. For the auditor's so office? I, I forwarded Compliance. exactly Compliance. what I Compliance. Compliance. Yeah, Compliance. Yeah, I forwarded exactly what I sent to you, to Kate as well, to let them know that this is coming. Okay. Okay. So. Good. Okay. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Thank you, guys. See you, Frank. See you. Okay, transit. Right. Yep. Thanks. You want? Shortly soon after that. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Just let me go through. Granted, we it's just for elderly and disabled. The state of Ohio reimburses us with money that we spent from July 1st of 19 through June 30th of 20. We reduced their we re reduced the seniors and the elderly by three dollars. So it's a Six dollars. It's only three dollars, and then they reimburse us all the four dollars that we spent. Okay. So the forty-five, okay. one eighty, is actually a reimbursement of the discounts we already gave. All right. I'll make that motion. Second. Mr. Yes. Mr. Spiller. Yes. Mr. Spiller. Yes. Okay. Mr. Spiller. Yes. 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 Mr.
Those Dave Blair's project. Okay, so uh, welcome to the 2021 Permanent Appropriations meeting. So this is the culmination of uh, this wonderful year of 2020, uh, preparing for, for next year. So glad that we're going to say goodbye to, to 2020 and hopefully mm -hmm. 2021 will be uh, an even better. <coughs> Although we only have to go up from 2020, but um, as far as the finances of the county has been, it, it's it's been a pretty good year uh, in comparison to what we were thinking yep. back in the spring was going to happen. So, um, but want to thank all the the commissioners and all the departments for their input and uh, effort in in putting together this uh, this budget for next year. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of this uh, for people that have been here multiple times uh, is going to be familiar. Um, and uh, we can take questions at the end. Um, or if you commissioners, if you have any uh, okay. questions while we go, we can we'll take a look. So uh, the, the budget process uh, begins um, uh, in, in the, the spring, obviously, with the department's initial uh, uh, requests. And uh, the budget commission in August uh, certifies the revenues that the, the department said that they would be getting in the tax budget process and that amount that of revenues that they're expecting to get during the year combined with the unencumbered fund balance uh, together equals the total resources that that the county has to work with um, and then the county commissioners appropriate funds to the various county departments and uh, the total amount of appropriations by fund will not exceed the certified amount of resources as determined by the budget commission So for 2021, um, now now some of these some of these numbers are going to be a little bit higher. That minimum estimated carryover balance as a result of uh, the uh, COVID money, the mm -hmm. HB 481 and stuff, probably going to end up a little bit higher than what I had estimated here. Um, the final dis disposition of those numbers wasn't really known at the time I put this together, but mm -hmm. so that minimum carryover balance, uh, as a minimum, we've estimated at about. 10.5 million uh, with 2021 revenues as certified by the Budget Commission of 31,529,187 gives us a total resources of um, just about 42 million. Here's a graphical breakdown of uh, where our revenue is coming from for 2021. So um, it's 31.5 million as I've said. A majority of this, uh, uh, 14 and three quarters million dollars, uh, almost 47 percent of the, the county's total revenue uh, for the general fund uh, comes from our sales tax. Do you know where how we are, but just ballpark dip from um, 19's sales tax? Um, we were up right now uh, over last year. Yeah. So, how do you think? I mean, a lot more. Or a um, more? I'm not exactly. I'm not yeah. entirely positive, but I think it's going to be. We're going to be over it, mm -hmm. and I think it's going to be somewhere within a million dollars of 2019. Oh. Yeah, we don't have uh, the only number we don't have yet is what we would get uh, this month in December. So, yeah. but we are already well over our budget amount for this year. Yeah. So, um, the next one. Uh, this, uh, this sales tax is derived from the 1% county portion of the 6.75 sales tax paid in Joggy County. Again, uh, the average in the state of Ohio right now is about 7.17%. Um, Ohio law allows counties the option to go up to 2.25%. 
Um, there are only three right now out of the 88 counties in the state with a lower sales tax rate than Geauga County at, uh, at our 6.75. And on that sales tax, the county only gets 1%. Correct. The rest of it's the state. Yeah, the 5.75 goes to the state. Sure. Yeah. Would you speak up, please? Sorry, the, the one, out of that 6.75, the county only gets 1%. So six point, okay. the other five point seven five goes to the okay. state. Hey, Jerry, on that six seven five, do we actually get one the quarter for the nine nine nine? No, it's just the one, right? Because the quarter is in that one percent. Correct. Yeah. So the, the so we just go cool. one. So so it's yeah, not ten. earmarked for sale. It's not earmarked for that for nine one one and stuff like that. That was part of the, the justification when the commissioners had increased it, well, but yeah. yeah. So, so we, that was why that, they, they that pumped. Was well, because of nine one one? No, 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 no. no. They, the one percent. <coughs> so someone is we get the county total including nine one one is one percent. Okay. okay. So just under um, a quarter. Um, of the funding, the 7.7 .7 million there is the real estate taxes. Um, this uh, revenue is coming from the two and a half mills that the county general fund receives from the real estate taxes paid. Um, so let me ask you a question. Go back to the sales tax. So, so the so the three so the three so what would be the the minimum sales tax base? Would it be at three quarters of a percent then? Is what is what a county should be charging? There, there. Technically, there is no minimum that the county would charge. So I see the county can can make it whatever it is as long as it's not more than two and a quarter percent. Uh, two and a quarter. Okay, correct. And Tim, the year comes the sales tax. If I remember correctly, it's been almost a month since I looked at the numbers. But I think as of the end of or as of the November sales tax distribution, we were about two hundred fifty thousand mm -hmm. dollars short of what we took, took in all last year. Mm -hmm. so, so what we get in December, so we get in December will be you know, over two hundred fifty. Brings us even with next yeah, year. Yeah, yeah. That'll put you so, over for yeah. sure. Right. Yeah. That's a, you know, we were not predicting that, oh, right? No, there, was, we there was no expert. Yeah. yeah. I, I, you know, I joke with Adrian all the time. I was like, this is, you know, these are not numbers we were expecting no. to see with. Like, it doesn't jive with, with, a with what's going on. Pandemic. Right. You know, or, right? But the big boxes are doing, you know, the grocery stores were never closed. Yeah. They're slamming it. The Home Depots are slamming it. The Walmarts are slamming it. Yeah. And I think I think the huge thing that saved not only us but every county in, in Ohio as well as the state is the fact that in the budget last year they added in the sales tax on uh, internet sales. Yeah. So this is this was there's no comparison over last year of what the internet sales are because it wasn't it wasn't in last year's numbers. It's yeah. In this year's numbers. So just everybody who wasn't able to go out and purchase purchasing online mm -hmm. that we received that sales tax. So. Good point. So the next amount, uh, which is about eight percent of the county's revenue, is the department fees and fines. Um, that's budgeted at two and a half million uh, for next year. Included in these fees are those charged by the auditor, the building department, the courts, the recorder, treasurer, and board of elections for the services they provide to residents. And that goes back in the general fund. All of those fees and fines. Yeah, this is just the general fund revenue. Mm -hmm. So that's and then, and fund. then, um, but then, do we like take those fees and fines and redistribute those back into those departments? Then, or no? Through appropriations, yeah, yeah, yeah. would be part of our the appropriations that we give to those mm -hmm. departments. Um, the uh, property transfer tax, which is four up, is four point seven percent of the budget, is one and a half million. These are the fees paid when a property transfers to a new owner. Uh, prisoner housing is the revenue generated from the housing of inmates at the county jail or in from other areas. This is taking another jump for next year, increasing 350000 The increase was permitted due to the Sheriff's Department prisoner housing revenue line continuously outperforming the budgeted numbers for several years now. Uh, it remains to be seen how that number will be affected with the new administration that is uh, due to come in. Um, so we'll, we'll monitor that. With ICE? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah 
Because a, a big part of that is is the ice mm -hmm. housing. So, although maybe not as much as it once was, um, he also has uh, agreements with several other uh, counties and municipalities around here to, to house their uh, overflow as well. Mm -hmm. So the other, which is a million dollars there, that encompass, encompasses uh, several items including rents, gas well proceeds, insurance and other reimbursements, uh, and grants and county auction proceeds. The casino tax is the tax on the gross earnings of casinos. 51% of that tax is set aside for counties. Um, we have actually reduced that amount uh, by 25% to $750,000 uh, for next year. Um, and they will not make uh, their budgeted number for this year. They got, uh, although they rebounded nicely, they were hit very hard the second quarter of the year, so when, when all the casinos were closed. Um, interest income is being held at 700000 for next year. The local government tax is a revenue sharing tax that comes back to the counties from the state. So that is um, about 640000 or about 2% of our revenue. And the cost allocation is a charge back to county departments outside the general fund for services provided by the general fund, and that's about 600000 So between that casino tax and local government tax, those were all touted to be the big saviors in the, the local government, right? But those have really turned out to be somewhat flops, both of them. Correct? Well, what <clears throat> my understanding is, that happened before I was here, but the local government tax was reduced when the county started getting the casino tax, mm -hmm. and uh, it was supposed to, it was supposed to be a balance. So mm -hmm. you know what we were getting was going to be picked up, but obviously the casino tax has been lower than originally estimated yeah. from years ago, and then this year it was really so. How does that? Really I mean, not to get too far off subject, but how did? I mean, how do they continue to go after promises made and not promises kept and it continues, you know, it was supposed to be to solve all the problems, you know, schools problems and everything, you know. I mean, how do they get away with continuing to, to move on that track? I mean, mm -hmm. to, to, put it, to put it bluntly, <laughs> politics. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Huh. Adrian, on that transfer tax, property transfer, didn't, wasn't there a bump in that like a year ago? They there was. There, there yes. were some um, properties that were exempt from that, that it was determined uh, would no longer be exempt. So that, that has taken a bump. It's it's uh, up another level from what it used to be. Prisoner housing really used to be uh, more than that. And uh, so it, it did take a bump. Mm -hmm. So probably, uh, what, about five 500,000 a year or so? Yeah, it's around. Yeah, so it used to be around three, a million, and they're estimating about 500,000. So that's it for that slide. So do you have a breakdown of that sales tax portion that goes to the state of where they're putting it? I do not. The five and a, five and three quarters that they get, I, it's I a mystery. Know that. It's all that all the sales tax goes from the business to the state, and then the state reimburses the counties for their portion of it. How they handle it, that falls into the state's budgets. And I don't know, I don't know that I, in what I've looked for in the past. It's not separately de delineated. It kind of that that money all goes into their big pot mm -hmm. of money, and then they just it's so a, there's no it's, it's amazing. It's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. it's ridiculous. The amount of the amount of money that they oh yeah, yeah. and where is it? Yeah. But we to feel like we're, we survive on we one feel like we're getting that yeah. you know five and three quarters right really taken care of with you know that three million for the epidemic, but we're in, in the scope of things, what is it compared to what they've been getting year after right. year after year? But like Adrian just said, you know, we, we somehow eke out a living on 1% and they're getting, what, 5.5%? Yeah, almost and, and they, million dollars a year. And they can't cut Geauga. it, you know. Right? Yep. In addition to all their other revenue sources. Right. I mean, That's they obviously are, are just a huge, uh, obviously, um, part of governing this, this state, but it is, it is it's gotten too big. significant amount of money. So the um, for 2021, the permanent appropriations for all funds is uh, 122 million. So um, this has uh, it's up probably about a million dollars over the adopted budget from last year. 
but uh, the, the true story is uh, we actually have a, a surplus in, in all the funds for next year of a, about $300,000. So our, our revenue um, has been performing very well and uh, the, the modest increases on a budget that size of a million dollars has produced a, a $300,000 surplus of revenue over expenses. And uh, the, the story in the general fund too is this a, is the third year in a row now where we've kept it at, in that $34 million range. So it, it went down a little bit last year and believe it or not, for next year it's only going up about $1,000 over what we adopted last year. So three years in a row now keeping it under that uh, $35 million mark. It'd be interesting to see you know, who else is doing that. You know. The, the line item requests that we got were just a hair over 35 million. Um, a, a majority of that is um, is in the commissioner's emergency fund. So I um, would like in the uh, supplemental in the spring to increase that another $500,000. And then there were some some maintenance requests which amounted to about 120,000 uh, for different things that, that they were looking for that we kind of just delayed the funding on. So here's a breakdown uh, pie chart of where everything's at for the 2021 uh, general fund expenses. Um, for public safety, we're looking at about 13 million or about a little over 40% of the budget. That includes the sheriff, the coroner, and the building department. Uh, next behind that is the legislative and executive, about 33.4% of the budget and it includes all those um, departments there on the side, including this office, the auditor, the prosecutor, recorder, treasurer, ADP maintenance and all, board of elections and all those. Um, next would be the judicial, about 15, a little over 15% of the budget, 4.8 million. That includes all the, the courts, the jury commission, the public defender, and the clerk of courts. Um, next would be the uh, miscellaneous, which includes the youth home, police prosecutor, pretrial release, postage, legal fees, all that, about 2.1 million there, 6.5% of the budget. Um, human services, conservation, recreation, and uh, health, which is the uh, um, children with mental handicaps uh, paying their, uh, um, sharing in their uh, uh, hospital medical expenses. Breakdown. Currently, we're estimating uh, that the cash balance on January 1st is in that uh, 10 to 11 million dollar range. It's probably going to be higher than that um, due to the COVID money and then where where some of that ended up. Um, so our, we're estimating the carryover encumbrances to be about 1.15 million. Um, the certified revenue for 2021 being 31.5, less the appropriations of 34.3, 34.3, leaving about $7.6 million uh, for those unfunded requests and the restoration of the contingency, contingency account and capital transfers. Now the, the debt payment uh, right now for our bonds that we're gonna be having for the, um, for the new building, which is the first one's going to be selling in about 15 minutes. <laughs> um, we're thinking that's going to be right in the 1.6 to 1.7 range every year. So part of that, which I actually have. Is that for both? Or for, that's for both that's of them. Both. Yeah. Okay. Um, so that's that that obviously is going to be coming out of that um, yep. unappropriated balance mm -hmm. there. So the pending requests and things like that, those are going to be those are going to be changing over time as we, we look so, at the available we're, resources. We're very comfortable in that annual payment, you know, even if things were to, you know, backslide or sales tax were to, I mean, we're still within that range of, yes. yeah, 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 I mean, it's, it's very, it's very doable. Yeah. This, this has a, showing an ending balance of about um, $700,000. There's um, uh, some funding that uh, is being considered by by you for the, the airport as well, that would, would take that down yeah. even a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah. 
That's, that's pretty impressive, actually. Isn't it? So some of the uh, some of the pending requests, um, which include transfers from the general fund to other funds, uh, once the actual amounts are known after the start of the new year, these requests will be evaluated in light of available resources and considered for possible funding. What's the ADP board? That was their um, uh, community outreach for the ADP. We did. We held back on that one. They started. They they started these. We we had we had talked about it. You, you probably just uh, yeah. Um, they started a community outreach. They wanted to do videos and different things. Oh right. For right. The, yeah. Right. So you're, yeah. Um, we held back on the ADP portion. We gave them the reef and the auditor one that they were looking for, but we held back on the ADP one because we thought it was a little redundant. Mm -hmm. And we'll just kind of see where they go with it and. Uh, it can be considered for uh, in, during the supplemental appropriation in the spring. Mm -hmm. uh, the clerk of courts, that's their uh, dollar raises that they give yeah. to no, their people. I'm going to say no to that right now. Yeah, so we kind of pull that back and, and allow them to fund that themselves with this certificate of title. And then um, the sheriff, the 911-800 megahertz system? Yes, yeah. that's the 700000 that they're needing for the 800 towers and the 150 for the address upgrades for 911. Did we just do, I thought. We're going we're gonna to probably do that this year. So um, some of those numbers uh, are, are going to be changing because this one is probably going to be coming out this year. I thought we did this, did, or did we just do this? No, it's just we've been talking about it, so it seems like it's... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like when I first got here, didn't you? When's the last time you did it? Did you do it? No. no. The only thing that they had was this, that one invoice that slipped by and... Oh, yeah. I think what, or I mean, Motorola, maybe. Yeah. yeah. They did yeah. the communication so was, portion to yeah. switch from analog to digital, which is, that was a huge portion yeah. that they had to go out for notes for. Um, oh, to yeah. do the upgrade and then the purchase of all the radios and stuff like that that they've been working on trying okay. to do through replacement supernance in their computers. But um, this is for tower upgrades and uh, for the addressing. I see. Okay, so obviously uh, we, we've paid off now the water tower and the water system down by the services center. So. We paid off another debt this year. Obviously, we're going to be taking on some debt um, in 2021, and we're going to be working to mitigate that as early as possible. So, with the five-year calls on those bonds, we can, you know, build up a, a fund to pay off a portion of those and then reissue them mm -hmm. um, if the the financing all makes sense. I was wondering, are you able to take <coughs> that money and? have it invested so it's uh, you know generating you know even if it was you know a couple percent or whatever in the in lieu of that are we able to set that aside and invest that money or does it have to sit in cash yeah, we no, talked about that this morning with Chris oh did yeah. they okay and they were going to get with Adrian yeah. to see exactly. the schedule okay so that we could do the okay payment schedule versus investment schedule yeah and make sure it measures okay right. okay and then, uh, you know, some of the things that we've been dealing with, obviously, uh, doing the new buildings, uh, we continue to deal with, you know, people retiring and turnover in different departments. Um, you know, the buildings that we're going to be taking care of, which obviously is going to be the, the ones up on the square, uh, for the most part here in Chardon still, uh, we're going to still have to maintain those until uh, we determine, you know, what we're going to do there. And then obviously selling these buildings and um, some of the other stuff uh, that, that we have and making sure that the things we're holding on to are, are things that make sense. I think that, that the maintenance of old buildings, you know, especially now that we've got you know, our building in place and everybody was given an opportunity to, to, to get on board with us, you know, I think that, I think that, those, that those maintenance costs should be reflected to their budgets as far as you know if we start to having to dump a bunch of money into these old buildings based on the fact that they did not want to move they didn't want to do this they didn't want to do that and we you know I think that it comes a point in time where we have to say okay you know we gave we granted you your wish but 
at this point in time for us to continue to do this, you need to understand that this is what you wanted and this is what you've got. But if you're go if we're going to be continuously dumping these dollars in there, I don't think it's fair to the taxpayers when we're making the smart decisions to get rid of all the headaches that we that we've got and and to be in an efficient and effective building that they can have their cake and they can eat it too. I think that they're going to have to understand is let's you know really start to look at this and understand that you had an opportunity and you passed. Now all of a sudden we're going to get dumped on hundreds of thousands of dollars in repairs and those potentially could be you know big dollars. And and I think that it's got to get to a point in time that we've got to draw the line in the sand and say okay we're going to put $100,000, but you're going to have to give up something, you know, and figure out how you're going to do it. Because I think that this is going to be a true example when we're open for business of what efficiency is supposed to be. Mm -hmm. And to continue to throw good money after bad, isn't it? Like you said, it's not, it's not fair and it's not right to the taxpayers. Explanation, you know. clarification, mm -hmm. Ralph. Uh, I don't want to answer it. All right, uh, Mr. Lennon, I, I would appreciate clarification, particularly with the explanation of, I was not aware of uh, the county forking in another, what did you say, $100,000 a year? Did I hear that correctly? Well, the, I think what he's referencing is maintenance of old buildings and continuing to maintain old inefficient buildings year after year. Um, when there was um, opportunity to uh, get on board with, you know, newer, efficient buildings. He was just throwing a figure out. I don't yeah. think that. that okay, yeah. so we're not talking. I think my my concern here is whether this is a final outcome or whether this is still subject to court adjudication. Well, yeah, this is the these are future appropriations that we will decide on. If we're going to continue to, do, you know, spend that type of money or not, and, you know, these right. are okay, requests. But requests. Yeah. All right, but that's that's le in legal right now, correct? Well, the 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 legal proceedings that are going on by the city of Chardon is, is not going no. to affect the building of the new buildings, or even uh, to any great degree, uh, who is going to end up in that new building. So. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for that yeah. clarification, gentlemen. Okay, uh, I guess uh, any other questions from anyone? I might have had more, but Mr. Spitaleri has decided he won't answer mine. Yeah, so I don't talk to uh, fake news. <laughs> okay. Well, I guess uh, we do have uh, the uh, appropriations measure right there with the resolution uh, ready for your signatures. Mm -hmm. So um, I'll leave it up to the to Christie to... Okay. To call that. So let's I, do that. Okay. This would be resolution 20-170, adopting the 2020 appropriation resolution. Okay. In accordance with ORC 575.38 and 575.40. Okay. Motion, please. So move. Second. Mr. Gore? Yes. Mr. Gore? Yes. Adrian, thank you very much. Oh, you're and, very uh, welcome. So I know you've my been, pleasure. You've been, uh, Working at that for quite a while, getting it all together, and yeah, now you can start working on 2022. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The, definitely the the work the work doesn't end here. So no, no. And maybe with the sales tax, the municipalities when they were out of toilet paper and paper products and stuff, maybe they came out to Jaga to purchase out in Jaga. The things were missing. And that's why and I couldn't get that. Yeah, we couldn't get ours. You know what I mean? I mean yeah, maybe that, that's why we that, got a little spike. That's actually one of the things I usually point out in, the, in these meetings is that sales tax, the one nice thing about that sales tax and being a large portion of our numbers, is that's not all coming from Jug County residents. The way our, you know, the way the, re, the retail has been set up in this county, kind of being on the corners, that's a lot of people coming in from Lake County. Oh, know, yeah. Cuyahoga County and Trumbull County and Portage County to do shopping yeah, right. that has you know that is beneficial to Geauga sure. County yeah. as opposed to their county. Yeah, yeah. So.
No, for that's, sure. That's one of the nice things about the way, you know, certainly I wasn't part of that, but the way that happened and developed, <laughs> that that is a benefit. To uh, so yeah. Sherry, one final question. Early in the year, there was discussion uh, uh, about doing some research about uh, uh, the level of uh, county tax in as much as our rate is one of the three lowest in the state. Was that ever resolved as to whether uh, there was the potential for raising taxes in Chiaba County? Or is that a dead issue at this point? I don't, there's been no talk about raising taxes. Okay. No, no. Okay. Right now, what, what we have coming in is, is you know, covers It, it sounds do. like it is. You know, serendipitous. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we're we're managing very well. Yeah, yeah, yep. Okay. okay. Um, All right. We, sorry, before we jump to the uh, executive session, I do have one addition, which is just a motion to add <coughs> the following elected officials to the county's dishonesty and faithful performance policy in accordance with Resolution 20-091, passed by the Board of County Commissioners on August 11th for their newly elected slash re-elected terms. Mm -hmm. This will allow them to be under our course of policy instead of having to get a surety bond. Okay. Uh, that is Sheila Bevington, Clerk of Courts, Timothy Lennon, Commissioner, Ralph Spillary, Commissioner, John Urbancic, Coroner, Joe, Joe Cattell, Engineer, Jim Flays, Prosecuting Attorney, also Jim Flays for his Prosecuting Attorney Furtherance of Justice, uh, Celeste Mullins, Recorder, Scott Hildebrand, Sheriff, Scott Hildebrand, Sheriff, for his further, furtherance of justice. Chris Hitchcock, Treasurer, and Timothy Grindel, Court, Court of Common Pleas, Probate and Juvenile Judge. Okay. Um, do you need a motion on that? Yes. Yeah. Next, yeah. to move. Second. Yes. Yes. Thank you. And thank you. And then, um, when are we doing our reorg meeting? It's set for the first Tuesday of January, which would be January 5th, um, and I will be getting to you um, before the end of this week, motions uh, tentative for that day mm -hmm. um, to preview. Um, we're looking at doing a work session at the end of the meeting on the 29th oh, uh, okay. of December. December, okay. Um, because do, do we need to get in. sworn in and all that again? Um, yes, yes. You, want, you will still need to get, even with this, with this policy, you you'll still, still need to do all the other stuff. You need to be, get your oath and be sworn in. Okay. Could we have that? Um, well, that, that would have to be when, officially. It could be right now if you want to. Yeah, it could be any time oh, before, be, before, before you take off. Take off. Don't do it right now. You don't have okay. to oath in front of you. Okay. <laughs> But we could plan on doing that if you wanted to do that next next Tuesday meeting. Or okay. Or, and it doesn't even have to be in a, it doesn't even have to be in a public it meeting. It doesn't have to be in a public it meeting. It just has to be an, another okay. elected official swearing you in and you sign off on the oath and I you see. sign off that they gave you. That. Okay. And then. Um, and then that gets attached to the insurance certificate that will be coming from Corsa for that replace for the policy in lieu of your bond. Okay. Um, and then they still have to be filed. Um, in accordance with the order. Okay. Right. So, we have one item left on the agenda. This session, yes. Okay. For the purposes of the of uh, discussing the employment of public employee in the Department of Development. Okay. Um, so, we'll move into executive session at uh, 1059. Um, yeah. uh, I think we have to do a motion. Second. Correct. Yeah. So, Make the motion. Second. Yeah. Yes. Right. Yes. Okay. And then, um, well, Jerry, three commissioners, and then Dave Weaver. Dave. 